welcome back to another episode of the Inside Lines podcast. I'm your host, Atoya Burleson. And I am Tia Averill. Coming up a bit later in the show, we are bringing you guys a double. That's right. We'll be chatting with Fox sideline reporter and founder of Galvanize, Laura Oakman, as well as Bleacher Report content programmer, Drew Jones. But first, Tia, how was your weekend? Uh, my weekend was good. I am thankful that we did not have a tournament. We um, A basketball tournament was canceled. So I was able to get some stuff done on my never-ending to-do list. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what it has been about 2023. But yeah. it is kicking my tail and my to-do list is never ending. Um, <sighs> but You're not lying. Yeah. And then last night we did a um, couples like date night. How was it? Where we, it was good. Um, one of the ladies, well, husband and wife hosted, brought a mm-hmm. chef in, brought a bartender in. And it was good. Just wanting to see other black people in Seattle. <laughs> 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 but like... <laughs> nice successful families it was good nice little night how about That's you how awesome. was your weekend you know i love a date night so i'm glad y'all did that <laughs> uh weekend was good for us you know it's been a crazy busy i think few days to your point as well um we went to vegas for um nate was inducted into the east west shrine Bowl go, hall of fame <laughs> So that was really fun to see him 20 years later uh, get inducted into the Hall of Fame. Crazy yeah, tell him what long. the uh, East West Shrine Bowl is. So the East West Shrine Bowl. So after okay, so after you finish your collegiate career, mm-hmm. um, some players that played in college get invited to a bowl game, and there's mo- there's multiple bowl games. There's the East West Shrine Bowl. There's the Senior Bowl. There's a bunch mm-hmm. of them kind of all mm-hmm. over. So Nate was invited to the East West Shrine Bowl, where basically all of these college athletes go. And there's recruits there. There's NFL people watching them, seeing how they play in the game, how they do. They uh, they mm-hmm. um, also interview the players, ask questions. So it's a great way to get your, uh, I guess, your name out there more and also mm-hmm. highlight your talents and abilities with other NFL athletes from all over the country, which is great. So Nate played in that 20 years ago. He got inducted uh, oh, wow. this weekend, which was amazing. We had such a great time. Um, and then we came back, went to basketball for my boys, and um, now I'm getting ready for Super Bowl Let's along with Mia. <laughs> She's now going for Nickelodeon for Super Bowl. So it's going to be a crazy busy time. I'm just trying to like Breathe. namaste, <laughs> keep going over my checklist, but we're going to get there. It's going to be such a fun weekend. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, so speaking of Super Bowl. Yes. Our Super Bowl show is coming up. The, the, the countdown go. is on. Okay. Yes. And we got to tell them to you. Listen, y'all. Toy, do we got tickets left? We are sold out, y'all. Let's we are go. completely sold out. We have no more tickets left for our Super Bowl show live at Neiman Marcus. Thank you for all the people that mm-hmm. bought tickets that are coming to support us. We are bringing y'all a live show and it's going to be lit. I'm going to tell Listen, y'all. Listen, <laughs> and this is not your regular podcast live show. Yes. Like we said it before, you all will eat good. There'll be good music. There's good, um, a nice little activation with Doja and Gabbana. Like, yes. I'm super excited about uh, the Don't Super Bowl show. Don't forget that DJ. Don't forget that DJ. You know listen, me. I love some music. <laughs> listen, and I, w- I will say, each year we keep on like leveling up. And so, yep. and one thing we know how to do is a live show. That's so, right. I'm so excited um, for this year. Uh, Toy, tell them about some of the people that's coming. Oh, my gosh, y'all. We have a lineup. We have. Philadelphia Eagles wise from Rachel Sachere to Katia Sue to Jennifer Slay. We also have Samantha Ponder from ESPN, who is fantastic. Y'all will love uh, listening to her. Don't forget, we, we you know we also have our men. We have the Chalk Talk at halftime, Nate and Cliff. Um, <laughs> that different. will be on to entertain y'all for a little bit. And then we'll go back into, of course, the women. And we'll uh, have a Neiman Marcus fashion show, which should be fantastic. A little mini, just to show y'all what's kind of happening right now in 2023. And then we're going to move on into, oh my gosh, the Listen. amazing Rachel Lindsay. Let me who, tell you. She is so I have amazing. So many questions. She is so, so amazing. <laughs> and listen, Rachel. Rachel has been my favorite since The Bachelorette. Yes. And mind you, that's not even a show I watch. But of course, she was the first black woman um, mm-hmm. to do it. So I was like, okay, I definitely have to tune in. But love Rachel. Love um, her podcast with Van Lathan Higher Learning. Van, yes, yes. So, and you know what? If y'all haven't purchased her book, try to get her book before mm-hmm. she comes on because it's good. It's really good. She is. Straight to the point. She she tells it like it is. 
I, I cannot wait. I have so many questions. Absolutely. We're going to have to give her some extra time. <laughs> <laughs> and her and WNBA player Naka. So it's going to be fun, y'all. I can't wait. Yeah. So if you guys actually missed out on the opportunity to purchase tickets, don't fret. It is a live pa- podcast taping. So mm-hmm. we will be releasing segments um, each day after yep. following Super Bowl. So you'll be able to see it. You can catch us on YouTube as well as on Instagram. So it's going to yes. be fun. And listen. Listen, next time, y'all, when we post, y'all better get y'all's tickets early because mm-hmm. they're going fast. I mean, we have a week left and we're already sold out. So next year, you know, we're going to be in Vegas live as well. Absolutely. Get your tickets early and come celebrate with us. Yes, yes. Okay, that's enough about Super Bowl. We will see y'all there. But right now, coming up next, our chat with Laura Oakman and Drew Jones. On the show today, we have two fantastic women joining us. The first is the third longest sideline reporter in NFL history. She has covered over 10 Super Bowls, and you will also see her on the sideline once again for this year's Super Bowl in Arizona. Laura Oakman, thanks for coming on the show. How are you? I'm so delighted to be here. It's like I'm going, I know I'm sitting like this because I want to be sitting like this. Like I can't get close (laughs) enough to you guys right now. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Well, we are excited to have you. Now, what Absolutely. you guys don't know, Laura is also the founder of Galvanize. It's a program she created to train and mentor young women entering the sports world on and off the camera. One of her amazing Galvanizers has also joined us today. Drew Jones is her name. She is a content programmer for Bleacher Report, where she published her first story feature on cornerback Jalen Ramsey. She is also an aspiring on-air sports reporter. And we'd like to also welcome you to the show, Drew. How are you? Yay, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. This is Laura's and my first interview together. Listen, and not only that, but okay, so this is our first duo. duo. You guys Mm -hmm. are together. And Laura, you're our first sideline reporter for Inside Line. So this is like the best day ever. <laughs> it's like just all in a circle. So many wonderful first. Yes. Thank you for yes. having us. Yes. We're so excited to have you. Now, okay, let's talk. Let's start with you, Laura. You've been in the game for over 20 plus years. So a fitting question for, for you would be, what led you to this career for so long? <laughs> first of all, I love that you said 20 plus because... I bet you that was like that was in my bio that you read or that was sent because in the old days when I first started, you were so petrified to say how long you'd been in this business because it aged you. And so I always be like over ten, and that was up to twenty, like over ten years. Let's just go with that. But the best thing, Toya, is when you said over twenty, where I'm like, hold on, it's over thirty now. Like, and I'm not saying for everyone who's listening now. She's uh, in that yeah. mindset where it doesn't matter. Okay. 30 plus y'all. That is right. unbelievable. And how it, that's inspiring. It, that's what I'm hoping. And, and I got into this, I got into this, you know, 30 plus years ago in a time when everyone kept saying you were crazy, right? Like no one <laughs> wants you here. No one cares what you mm. think. No one cares what you think. And so it was constantly, um, go, go away, you know, go have a plan B, go do something else. And so what I love so much is being not just a woman in sports, because thank God we have more numbers, but my favorite part of it is I want to be a woman 50 plus in sports. I want Drew. Mm. And I smiled when you said aspiring because Drew isn't inspiring, isn't aspiring in anything. Drew is right now. Like I love that. Just is she's in her sweet spot right now. But I want Drew to see somebody doing it who's older than 50 years old to not go, what else am I going to do when I hit 40 for her to go, I actually think I'm going to get better because I know Laura feels that way or Pam Oliver feels that way or Lisa Salters feels that way. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about that a little bit um, further. Yeah, let's talk about it a little bit further because I know you said it, at first people shied away from saying how long they've been in the game. It's not just people. It was really just women because men don't they they weren't faced with those same um, issues. Right. So knowing all the craziness that goes on for women reporters in the sports world, Drew, how did you decide to also join? And I, I want to say the craziness, but it's not craziness. But 
Yeah, you know, so I grew up an athlete. I played softball for 11 years, also um, golf, martial arts. I did a bunch of different sports growing up, but softball was my main sport. And when I got to college and, you know, hung my cleats up, um, I was like, I don't want to leave the sports world. I mean, any athlete pretty much understands that it's just really hard to leave the sports world. Uh, it's just... I mean, there's really nothing like it. You know, your heart's still in it. So um, that's what made me decide to go into sports. And I kind of, when I was in college, it was at the time where print was still around, but like kind of on a downswing. And I knew I wanted to be an on-air sports reporter. So I ended up going to get my master's degree to get a little bit more instruction. But yeah, for me, there was never a fear. I grew up an only child and my dad told me I can do whatever I wanted to do and it didn't matter. I mean, he taught me how to change my oil in my car. I never have to rely on anybody. So, <laughs> shout out to dad. That's awesome. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have a question for you, Drew. Okay, when you first started, how first tell us how you found out about Galvanize and mm-hmm. kind of how you got into the program because I'm sure there's other mothers listening, other girls listening that would love to know. Yeah, it's actually kind of a funny story. So my aunt was watching Real Sports by Brian Gumble, and she mm-hmm, and she mm-hmm. happened to see a segment that Laura was on, and she was like, "Oh my god, I know you want to be a sports reporter. You should go and do this program." And had she not done that, I probably wouldn't have found out about it until years later. Yeah. So you know, I followed mm-hmm. Galvanize, followed Laura on social media, and like I got butterflies when like she followed me back. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god, this is the <laughs> silent reporters following me back on social media, right?" Um, yeah, so then I, uh-huh. I followed and I was like, okay, I definitely want to go to the next boot camp whenever they happen. And so, um, that was right before I went to grad school. So back in 2017. And I remember, so my uh-huh. first boot camp was with the Atlanta Falcons and we got to go to Lake Lanier in Georgia, which is kind of like, um, a resort of sorts that people go to for vacation. And that's where they were having rookie training camp. And I remember thinking, I wonder Mm -hmm. if Laura's actually going to be here. Like, I wonder if this is just some like (laughs) random thing that she sets up and just (laughs) sets up and has it. But, and I walked in the door and and she was there with her, like her really cute shirt that said, are we allowed to cuss on here? (laughs) Yeah. It was this really cute shirt that said unfuck with a bull. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's actually here. She's She's mentoring me. This is incredible. Incredible. So, um, yeah, and I just I, I promised myself after that camp that I would go mm-hmm. every year to another boot camp and promise myself to learn something every year. So, so you said uh, you promised yourself. Yeah, so I promised myself every year after that that I would go to at least one boot camp and and vow to learn something new. Okay, so Laura, so tell us more about Galvanize because she said, yeah, because she's boot camp and she's going every year. Can you tell us how it all works? Why, why you started it and why it was like just so important to you? And first, let me say the reason why I had a curse word on my shirt <laughs> is because my our partner was Dan Quinn, who was the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons, and that uh-huh. was his phrase. Love and you. he. And, right. So DQ um, gave me the shirt because he thought I was that. And so I had never been given a bigger honor. And so we were with the Atlanta Falcons. And so that was our theme of the week, but only because of DQ saying that. So I just want everyone to know if you do send me your daughter, I normally don't wear that T-shirt until they get to know me a little bit better. But you deserve, um, okay? <laughs> okay. 50 plus, 50 plus. Um <laughs> So I think I started Galvanize because two reasons. One, you sometimes create what you crave, you know, what you didn't have. And I never had a woman friend who was a peer growing up. And it was a really hard industry, it still is, to navigate. And there was no black or white. It was just gray. And my best friend was a man. And I leaned on him so much, um, Stuart Scott. And Stuart was the only person that I could really talk to about this industry. And yet, he still didn't understand it as a woman. And so I didn't have anybody. And I would dream about that of like, what would it be like to have a female sport of someone who was in the Mm -hmm. industry Mm -hmm. that really understood what I was going through. And I really always craved that and didn't have a woman as a mentor either. And it just wasn't a sisterhood back then. We were so busy trying to make it work. And we were so busy Mm -hmm. trying to blaze a trail. You didn't have you didn't have time to look to the side or look behind you or look Mm -hmm. in front of you to who had done it 
because you just were trying to look down and keep one foot going. It was so hard yeah. back then. And so I got to an age where I started seeing more and more women in this industry, and I thought that was amazing. But what I started seeing was they were throwing them in way too fast and way too high. And I knew I would have failed if I got thrown in that quickly. And okay. I started seeing these young women getting chewed up and spit out. And mm. so what I wanted to okay. do was just go, how can I help? And I'm really fortunate that when that trend started happening, I was old enough to be motherly. Because if it happened when I was younger, I would have been judgmental of the women. And I would have been mm. like, well, then they weren't ready. That they shouldn't be here. But luckily, okay. I was older, and I thought how unfair this was and how grateful I was for my path. And honest to God, one day, Drew, I, I think we've talked about this place. It's called Lake Shrine and Pacific Palisades. Like I Googled, I was living in L.A., and I Googled most spiritual places in Los Angeles, and I didn't find mm -hmm. many. And I found this beautiful <laughs> place that I would go to, and it was this Zen garden. And I wrote, I brought a journal with me, and I wrote, how can mm -hmm. I help? And I sat there for hours and literally I found this the other day, my notebook was galvanized of without a name, but how I wanted to help women in this business. And looking at Drew, it's just like I manifested this incredible young woman in my life. And as someone who doesn't have children, it's a really big gift to feel like I have Drew and I've got, you know, 5,000 of her sisters that, you know, feel like they filled up my motherly heart. That's beautiful. It really is because you, okay, first of all, you hit so many gems there. You mm -hmm, talked about, mm -hmm. you know, being young and being judgmental, right? And not really having those relationships with women. And I think that is a struggle for a lot of women when they're young mm -hmm. because they are judgmental. There is a lot of that, you know, lack of sisterhood. But as you got older, you develop that wisdom and you, your lens changed, right? You could see things differently. So I, I just, that really hit me because I remember those things as mm -hmm. well. And you do understand that. But just being like, you talked about journaling and writing and, and really figuring out who you are and who you want to be. Those are some gems that I think so many of us need on a daily, right? Just mm -hmm. sitting and writing and being alone with yourself. Um, but one thing you didn't talk about you talked about, you know, you saw these other women fail, but you didn't talk about your own failure. I need to know, have you shared with <laughs> any of your galvanized girls a funny, just something that happened back in the day when you were first doing this and you just, just dropped, you just, it was a huge failure and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe that happened. Tell us one of those stories and share with the, uh, maybe Drew, something she hasn't heard. <laughs> I, like, if you went into a galvanized workshop or a boot camp, I think I teach from all my failures. Like I don't, I don't, mm, I don't think I, okay. I think I okay. very rarely talk about what I've succeeded at or what I do really mm -hmm. well. Sometimes I do for teaching, but I, I think, I, I think like the Charles Barkley story. Yeah. Oh, Charles. Oh, okay. Drew, so now, yes. now you so got to give it to a good us. one. So that's probably the foundation of Galvanize and the foundation of who I am with my relationship building is I was a young reporter in Montgomery, Alabama, and so probably 22, and I huh. just got out of school, and, and Charles would come back because he's from Leeds, Alabama, and his basketball mm -hmm. coach was at um, where I was. And so I got to know Charles, and one time I called Charles, and he answered the phone, and he said, well, 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 Laura Oakman, what do you need? And I was like... <laughs> Charles, can a girl just call and say hello? And he said, a girl can, you just never do. And he's mm -hmm. like, I'm not trying to give you shit. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying when you call, you need something. So what do you want? And yeah, yeah. my heart just dropped because I, I never want to be that person, you know, who wants to be mm -hmm. that one that, ugh, you know, like, mm -hmm. what does Laura want? So I, I, at that age, I thought, why else would I call Charles? Because I, I, I'm not going to say good game. I'm not going to say, how was your weekend? And navigating gray, right? Like, yeah. why yes. am I calling? So yeah. I just never called, but that immediately set, I don't want to say reset, it set me um, and set my north about what kind of reporter I wanted to be and what kind of person I wanted mm -hmm. to be because I was and still continue to be, you know, my foundation is building relationships. So I had, yeah. that was the greatest yeah. lesson that I could have ever learned was from Charles. And I love that Drew, Drew could tell all of my stories because he's <laughs> <laughs> so many times. Yeah. No, I was just going to ask if, if you feel more comfortable, like, even though he said that, do you feel more comfortable with checking in and just saying hi to these guys? Like, have you found that balance between that? 
Yeah, that's the cool thing in getting older. It's now what I would tell you is my rule is it's when I started, I do a lot with not just training young women and coaching women. I work a lot with young men. And so I'll always kind of find the intersection of galvanize and training these, you know, young men. And that's how I brought them together because I was trying to teach women how to build relationships, how to navigate the gray Mm -hmm. and Mm-hmm. how really to earn trust and earn respect the right way. And then I had all these men who were telling me nobody wants to build a relationship. Nobody wants to be trustworthy. And so I wanted mm-hmm. to bring the two sides together. And so yeah. I called a few of the players um, that I had built relationships for decades. And one of them is one of our incredible young women who, who's been in Galvanized since she's been 17, Brian Erlacher's daughter. And oh, yes. I called Brian because yes. it took me three years to get in with Brian Um, Mm -hmm. who doesn't let many people in. And I called him and I said, I'm trying to help these two sides. Can you tell me what I did to get into what he calls his bubble? How did I do that? Is it something I can teach? Mm -hmm. And he Mm -hmm. said, that's easy with you. When you reach for me, when you reach to me, you ask for something out of 10 times once. And he's like, I never think you need something. So that Mm -hmm. hung up and called Charles right away, right? Like, thank you for the most important lesson I ever learned. But that is my rule. I reach out when I don't need anything. I reach out more after losses. You know, I, mm-hmm. I can't tell you guys how many texts, meaningful texts I get back after, you know, after the playoff losses or after every loss. And I yeah. make sure I'm reaching out when times are hard and when I don't need anything. That's so good. But, you know, what I love about that is even um, Charles bringing into your awareness that they're still humans, right? And it, and it's interesting because, of course, everybody else treats them like cattle, right? Like, what can you do for me? You're here to entertain me, things of that nature. And so when you just called just to check in and you're not asking for something for the next story or whatever, like, they really genuinely appreciate that. Like, I can name all yeah. the, the reporters who I know for sure my husband will still pick up the phone for and the, the other yeah. ones that he's like, I ain't got nothing for or him or, yes. you know, whatever. Um, so I love that. So, uh, Drew, tell us a little bit about what you guys do um, in the Galvanized program. I know you said there's some summer boot camps. Like, how does it all work? Yeah. So when I, I feel like it's evolved so much in the last, you know, five, how many years have I been around? Six years now. Oh my God, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting old. Everybody knows. <laughs> but, you know, when I first started, it was, you know, around late spring, summertime, um, Laura would have anywhere from, I feel like before it was like two to three boot camps, and now it's up to maybe four or five different teams that she's working with. I mean, she's having to turn teams down at this point, oh, nice. but um, it's two days. The first um, day is all about us connecting. Um, sometimes there's maybe 18 women, and then sometimes there's closer to 25, depending on the rookie class. But, or, yeah, even more sometimes. Yeah, mm-hmm. so – it's nice because the first day is all about us connecting, getting to know each other and learning how to get in with somebody really quickly. And then we utilize the skills from mm-hmm. the first day and go into the second day, go into a, an NFL facility, getting to meet rookies, sometimes coaches or uh, members of the PR staff mm-hmm. if they want to come and introduce themselves and tell us about their roles, too. But it's really it's a really, it's it, you get so much in two days. Um, and then mm-hmm. since then, I mean, with the pandemic, that kind of changed a lot of things. So some of the camps became yeah. virtual. And um, also mm-hmm. because of Laura's mm-hmm. connections, we've gotten other opportunities to not just work with NFL rookies, but I've had opportunities mm-hmm. to be able to interview professional women, ho- women's hockey players. Actually, one of the gals that I got to interview mm-hmm. What was it last year or the year before? Um, she won a gold medal with Canada. So I'm like, I know a gold medalist. Wow. I got to interview her. I know, like, that right. makes me so excited. <laughs> right. And, you know, we follow each other. I still, you know, I congratulate her. So it's really nice to um, not just get to work with men, but also work with women and, and get to see yeah. mm-hmm. them mm-hmm. lifted up as well. So it's been a really, really fun experience. And obviously, Galvanize, you know, I know so many people through social media that I haven't even gotten to meet in person, you know that I've gotten Mm -hmm. to really connect with. So that's been a lot of fun. That's awesome. That's, it sounds like a serious program. Like I feel like if 
girls are really interested, they're going to have to be all in. Like they have to really, it has, has to be something that they really love and mm-hmm. that they're dedicated to. And like you really, because you sound like you pour your heart into it. You give them everything that they need so that they walk out feeling so much more confident probably than, you know, when you first stepped out there. So I just love that. It's it's, it's actually inspiring it's me uh, for my daughter who just, she's in this world a little bit. About so mm-hmm. we're going to have to talk later, Laura. But yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have to talk a little bit uh, about that later, just because I can tell you put your heart and soul into this. But here's mm-hmm. the thing: it's one I love that listening to Drew because if you notice, the one thing she didn't talk about was sports, and yeah, that's the rule. And so we get the last boot camp cycle. Our youngest was 17, and they can only be that young. Usually, if they're a coach's daughter or a player's daughter, because I know they won't be intimidated by day yeah. two. Um, yes. mm-hmm. day one, they're intimidated to be around a big group of women. And, but I love that they get to feel that at a young age, what an, an empowering room feels like, mm-hmm. but day two, they're going to lead because I know that they're the ones who are telling everyone they're just, they're just men. They're, they're my dad, you know, they're my, you yeah. know, so we don't talk. So, so the last cycle 17 was our youngest little rock star and our oldest was 52. So really? we're getting more. 50s and 40s and 30s of women coming back for the dream. And so it's everything. And that's second chapters are my favorite chapter. So that's probably these days even more my heart. But yeah, yeah. we don't talk football. So day one, it's how do I get 20 to 26 women in love with each other who don't know each other? And usually if you're mm-hmm. a woman in sports, you don't trust women. You're not a big sorority girl. Like, how do uh, I make them yeah. all love yeah. day one? And then how do we add the men into the you know, then concoction day two and have them mm-hmm. feel like it. And so we don't talk about what you do. We don't talk about sports. We talk about who you are, what you've overcome, what you're mm-hmm. struggling with. And that, and I do exercises with both sides on empathy and respect. So the players have to interview the women who it's their first boot camp. They're pretty freaked out. Like the women yeah. are like, what? But I want <laughs> the women to feel what it's like yeah. to have somebody they don't know, ask them personal questions. Like, yeah. That's yep. hard. And I want the guys to yes. be like, it's hard to lead a conversation. So right. it's, it is. This sound like a program I, I need about to, it. I want to be in. <laughs> I, the same stuff I do with them, I do with executives. And I do at, uh, at uh, whatever I speak to corporations or speak to women's groups, men or women. Mm-hmm. It's all mm-hmm. about respect and empathy and how you connect with somebody and I just know I'm going to, can I swear? Uh, I apologize. Yeah. We should have said before, can we swear? Um, I know you already asked, but thank you. Thanks to you. I gave up two (laughs) things for COVID. I gave up assholes and I gave up small talk. And I just don't have time for either one. That is a hashtag. That's galvanized. We don't small talk. Like it's who are you? What's your fear? What have you overcome? What are you working on? And I know it looks like we have nothing in common, but we got a lot in common if we just Mm -hmm. open up to each other. So that's a, that is what I hope galvanizes and, do cover your ears. Some of it they'll know now in their twenties, but I hope that I hope that pretty soon I start getting calls and texts and emails from women ten years later, twenty years later, when they really realize what they got out of it. That's good. Uh, it sounds like absolutely. a lot of team building. You know, like I remember, mm-hmm. like my coach doing certain exercises and things with me, and it sounds like like that team building is so important, right? Because mm-hmm. once you kind of listen to everyone and they have your ears and your heart, like you can pretty much completely be yourself and and do whatever you want and with no judgment, right? So I yeah. love that you offer that straight out the just right in the beginning. That is, it's so important. Um, this is actually we're going to go back a little bit. Speaking of team building. I heard from doing a little bit of research that you traveled with the Chicago Bulls back in the day. And I was the a huge Chicago Bulls fan, loved Michael Jordan, loved that whole team. Um, and in my mind, I'm thinking like, how in the world did she do that back in the day with all these men and Talk, like, I want to hear about that. I would love to, like, just sit right there and have, like, sip on my tea and listen to you talk about it. It would have to be stronger than tea to really use that <laughs> conversation. <laughs> but what I would honestly say is back to your, like, embarrassing question of, like, what have you done? <sighs> Everything back then. And I don't have a funny one. I feel like 
I was young and I was overwhelmed and I was thrown yeah. into a world I wasn't ready for. And I made every mm-hmm. mistake in the book trying <laughs> to figure it out. And that probably is, you know, also probably the genesis of Galvanize is being like, God, I wish I would have had somebody to go, how do you do this? This is so yeah. hard. And yeah. I, that's why when I met Stuart Scott, the first time we were in, mm-hmm. we were covering the Bulls. He was at ESPN2, so he hadn't hit yet. Mm-hmm. And so we okay. were covering the Bulls. Drew, I'm sure I told you the story, but we, it was the day Alonzo Mourning was traded from the Hornets to the Heat. Mm-hmm. And so they were coming to the Bulls, and Pat Riley was coming in, and we, we were stuck in there all day waiting for the team to come in and for Riley to do the presser. And I walk in, and it's all men. It's all white men. And it's Stuart and I. And Mm -hmm. I just made myself small in the corner Mm -hmm. and like just tried not to be noticed. And Stuart, again, before Stuart was Stuart Scott, Mm -hmm. just was Stuart. He filled the room and Mm -hmm. he had, we had a mutual person and he came up. And the funny thing is, we would always laugh at this. The person's name he dropped when he introduced himself was a whore, like a serial abuser of women. So the fact that he dropped his name is actually hysterical now, but But he dropped his name and we started talking and that was where our friendship began. And I remember talking to him for, you know, forever, for over 20 years. I just was in awe of somebody who was different in that room and who didn't, who didn't didn't shrink. shrink. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. And he would try to coach me. He galvanized me before I galvanized of all the years and saying to me, I don't understand why you don't step into yourself. You know, if you don't look like everybody owned that and I just couldn't. So anyway, Atoya, it was magical. It was amazing. I learned so many lessons from covering that team and Mm -hmm. having those lessons, the backdrop of that, of those lessons being the flu game and being, you know, sitting on the floor for the flu game and sitting on the floor for those championship games, being able to say, hi, Michael, and talk to Michael um, yeah. And all of that was life changing, life defining. And yeah. I judge every other athlete on that because I know Michael, yeah. there was nobody bigger. There still aren't many who are, but Michael was a pro. Michael was always, um, did every press conference, did every interview. He treated everybody right. Like he was such mm-hmm. a pro. So yeah. now when I see guys who aren't like that, I'm like, oof, like if Michael Jordan, to do he is the bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. that's a tea mm. sipping conversation and a wine sipping conversation. Yes. Because these really are some of my favorite stories. And I forgot yeah. to mention you also won an Emmy. So I wanted to add that in there with that whole conversation because I left that part out. So yes, uh, y'all just know she she has uh, all the jewelry behind her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I do want to, I wanted to circle back to um, Stewart's scholarship or a scholarship that you have in Stewart's name. But mm-hmm. during this, um, during that last answer, you talked about shrinking in the, in the room. So number one, like, how did you overcome even a thought of you stepping into a room and, and you shrinking with all these men or all these quote unquote high power people? That's first question. And second question is to Drew, like, do you experience that? Um, now when you step into the rooms? Um, I would say I didn't, I didn't find that superpower until I was at least 42. I think that I was sleepwalking in an industry that I was trying to figure it out in and didn't let anyone in close enough because I didn't want to show I was hurting and I was lonely and I was depressed because everyone kept telling me what a Mm -hmm. cool job I had and I didn't want to look ungrateful. Mm -hmm. And so mm. I just kept myself small for a very, very long time. And then come 40, I did the work. You know, I just, I started trying to, Drew's heard this so many times, but I was in a plane I thought was crashing and and I was sitting there and I was watching people scream and cry and pray and grab for their phones and I didn't care. And mm. I just sat there and did not care if the plane crashed. And thank God when the plane landed, I thought, all right, I'm going to start creating a life that God forbid I was in a plane that crashed, I would care desperately. And my work began after that. And so Mm -hmm. I would say that it took me that long to figure out how to not just fit into a room, but stand out in a room. And I Mm -hmm. hope what Drew says, and Drew, if you don't feel this way, please don't say it. But 
I'm like crossing my fingers because my hope is if you're 17 in that room or if you're 52 in that room, that I don't care if you're in the board room, the classroom or a locker room, my hope out of every galvanizer is they walk into a room and they own that room. And I, I, I that's mm-hmm. probably what I pour my heart into most. But mm-hmm. I don't know if Drew, if Drew will feel that as much as hopefully I hope you do. Uh, when I walk into rooms, I'm pretty confident. <laughs> like I'm not a shy I'm person. I'm, I'm very extroverted. Okay. <laughs> um, my mom really taught me also to like not be apologetic for who I am and to own every part of mm-hmm. myself. Like one of her famous phrases is only a dog likes bones. You know, I'm a little thick. <laughs> but so there's nothing I should ever be embarrassed about. <laughs> so um, I notice though at work sometimes like so I work from home. I'm working in Slack channels, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I would Mm -hmm. say that like, I'm, I'm a leader in my own right, you know? Um, but sometimes at the Mm -hmm. end of the day, I'm like, wow, I was the only woman on our shift for eight hours. You know, I'm like, dang, that's, Mm -hmm. that's annoying. It's more, it's less like, ah, like, oh, I don't want to be one of those girls and more of like, nah, we need some more women in the room. My next meeting, I go to my manager, you guys need to hire more women. I know we do, Drew. Yeah, we're working on that, like, blah, 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 blah. So it's like I'm very unapologetically mm-hmm. myself. But I don't know. Things might change when we go to Super Bowl week and I'm seeing all my heroes in one room. I might, like, need to, like, have one of those type of moments. <laughs> oh, I love that. I think that that's so great that, you know, you mm-hmm. feel that way and that Laura is really poured into you so that you do walk in there. And even your mom, you know, I think – Two, I think about you being an athlete, and I wonder if being an athlete had something to do with that as well, because you've been in the light, you've Mm -hmm. been in the stressors, you've been in those games where, you know, everything was on the line. Do you think that that had anything to do with it as well? That's kind of where I thrive. That's probably, it's funny because like a mentor, another mentor of mine, a teacher of mine told me that I thrive really well well under pressure and, and and it's true and that's probably mm-hmm. why is in the clutch moments who's coming up to bat me and I know it's gonna happen when I come up to bat in a clutch moment I'm gonna hit the game winning triple <laughs> and that's happened a couple times <laughs> but actually I, I wanted know. to touch on Drew, um, I love you one of the things that oh sorry go ahead <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Laura I love you. Us, like, I, I love it. <laughs> I, I love you too. I love this. This is. I'm having a great time so far today. Um, but one of the things that Laura shared with us in our boot camps is, you know, go to your confidence place because I think, you know, a lot of people can be like me, very extroverted. Um, you know, very unapologetically themselves. But when they get on camera, it's kind of like, ah, like you know, start spinning down the rabbit mm-hmm. hole of I can't get you know, my stand up out. And so um, Laura was like, well, where's your confidence place? And I thought about it and my confidence place is, you know, I played outfield. So, you know, when I throw somebody mm-hmm. out, you know, they were trying to run on me going from second at home and I threw them out and that, yep. that's my confidence place. And so I think I went down the rabbit mm-hmm. hole a little bit when I was trying to do my stand up, and she's like, hey, you need to lock in. And I just, I think about that moment and I lock right in. So <laughs> that's also a helpful tip that's for those beautiful. out there. It really yeah, is. That's right. it, it, I remember competing and I remember that feeling. There's nothing like it. And to your point, if you just lock into it and embrace it, mm-hmm. magic happens. <laughs> Absolutely. When I first started figuring out the confidence place and started working, started working on that myself and then hopefully coaching that when I used to realize what I did before I would go live on TV in front of millions of people. And what I would do is talk myself down the rabbit hole, you know, like you could really Mm -hmm. screw up right now and you Mm -hmm. could look really stupid right now. And so no wonder I screwed up. And so I would talk myself down. And when I started doing the work on myself and figuring out who I was, I started going, I got to start having my voice be positive because after 20 years of having everyone in your head, right. Of like you, you don't matter. Your words don't matter. We don't want you here. Like Mm -hmm. that becomes Mm -hmm. your voice. Mm -hmm. So I really had to train my voice to be a fan and to be positive. And so Drew's heard the story when we get into the confidence place, what I'll always do is say one time I, what I would do right before I went on camera for the first time, I'd take a couple steps away from my photographer and the crew and I would start talking myself up and I would find, Mm -hmm. I would manifest Mm -hmm. where I felt the best about myself and where I felt really confident. And one day I was doing that and I was standing there And I'm just in that moment and I'm feeling how good I feel about myself. And I'm just kind of standing there. And all of a sudden, a guy just walks across from me on the football field minutes before I go on. 
and he just like stops and he like double takes and he comes back and he goes, sorry to interrupt, but whatever you're thinking about, it looks really good on you. <laughs> and he kept walking and I was like, how, like that told me what you think about yourself, like mm-hmm. you changed, yes. like my shoulders yeah. were moving. Like I was like, yes, yeah. I am. And, and so now that's one of the things that galvanize, we go around the room and everyone has to say their confidence place of, when did you feel that? What makes your shoulders move? What makes your head yes. bop? When do you feel good? The athletes usually go there. The trick mm-hmm. is for my non-athletes. And I'm always like, it can't be when someone else made you feel. It can't be you were just yes. beautiful. It can't be, it can't be when mm-hmm. someone else saw it in you. You. Mm-hmm. And I would mm-hmm. say my favorite part is when we go around the room, Drew, and I live for the ones who go, I don't have one. Because I'm like, then we're getting you one tomorrow. Because they're yeah. gonna, I know they're gonna go down a rabbit hole day two when everyone's nervous, and we're gonna own that, and we're gonna love them out of it and lift them out of it. And you mm-hmm. watch the antithesis of Drew. Most women who come into galvanize are not Drew. They are yeah. struggling mm-hmm. with confidence. They're mm-hmm. struggling with women, and so we have one full day to make her fall in love with herself, and make her fall in love with the room, and make the room fall in love with her. And watching mm-hmm. them literally go from making themselves small to head bopping in their shoulders back. Like yeah. I live for that. And Drew's been yeah. doing enough boot camps now where I count on her to find the ones who need the extra push or who need yeah. the, the little shoulder movement and help and help them become that. So while Drew is still a baby in our eyes, and I know Drew, mm-hmm. you know, it's always like, I'm not, but <laughs> she is one of my leaders and you were, you know, six years ago too. So age doesn't matter, but to watch Drew help a young woman find her confidence place is pretty mm-hmm. magical. And I hope what you would say, Drew, is finding your own, you know, your mom instilled that in you and that's magnificent. But there's something different when you help someone else find theirs. That yes. just that's yeah. it makes your heart grow two sizes. Absolutely. And you know I what? Totally agree. So you have brought this up a little bit ago and it sent me down a rabbit hole thinking about a few things. But <laughs> So number one, like being the, the the significant other of a professional athlete, everybody looks to you like, you like you have the dream life, right? Like you have the goal. So how dare you have a bad day? How dare you not feel confident? How dare you be upset because this isn't going your way or didn't go your way because they have because you have the dream life, right? And so to to one, I think this is great for our listeners because the, a lot of our listeners in it are in a similar position and where you you feel crazy almost for being sad in the lifestyle, right? But you speaking about them finding their confidence space, right? Because part of being confident is also being honest with where you are, like right now I'm not happy and it doesn't matter about a financial status. It doesn't matter who I'm married to. I'm not happy, but let me figure out what's happy for me. Right. Let me figure out where my confidence space, like absolutely love it. That is awesome. That's heavy. It's, it's, Mm -hmm. and it's one of those, again, why you need those safe spaces, right? Where Mm -hmm. it's the team Mm -hmm. I travel with for the NFL on Fox, we will bitch to each other nonstop about travel, right? Like it's hard. We're tired and you're older and you know, it's Mm -hmm, a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, flight cancellations, but I don't bitch about that out loud to anyone else because right. I know they're Mm going to be like, you got the best job in the world. Are you kidding? And so I think I have found when I was young, I just didn't talk about anything. I thought anybody would say I sounded ungrateful about, and now I find my safe spaces, you know, my confidence place, my Mm -hmm. safe space of, of Mm -hmm. what women can get together. And by the way, ladies, Drew knows this, this whole year I've called it um, my season of vulnerability. And Mm -hmm. I've made sure to share one story every week on a Sunday about therapy and about Uh um, um, vulnerability from all these alpha men. And Mm -hmm. they're feeling it too. And so there's something right now going on that's so beautiful with vulnerability of people sharing, but you have to find that safe space because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We all know this. It doesn't matter what your job title is or your finances or who you're married to. It's just, how do you feel about yourself? And I just know that I work with a bunch of um, professional women hockey players. It's a PWHPA and did a lot of their Mm -hmm. communications work. And it was a really cool honor for me because I have worked with men my whole life and then galvanized. Mm -hmm. But now suddenly I'm with a hundred women who are gold medalists from all over the world, not just the country and incredible women. The confidence is ridiculous, right? They're professional Mm -hmm. athletes. Mm -hmm. 
I could not believe it the first time I got in a Zoom with everybody, the talk about feeling, I don't want to sound ungrateful. I don't want to sound ungrateful because mm-hmm. they were fighting for a better sport. And that was just mm-hmm. one of the first things I remember saying to them is like, God, we have to stop being so grateful. We can be mm-hmm. grateful for our life and our in our families yeah. and all of that, but we can still want more for ourselves and each other. Yeah. But so it's, true. it's a, like, Tia, that's a... That's a real one of just mm-hmm. who are you now? What you not? What do you do? And that's a big question I always ask everybody: is you know who are you? And you cannot use your job, and you can't use your spouse, and you can't use your child. Mm-hmm. Go. And yeah. women struggle oh, that hard. Is, with that, that child one is hard, right? Like everybody <laughs> falls first thing. Easy. Well, I'm a mom of two boys. Like, okay, congratulations. What's next? What else? You know? Yeah. 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 And and back to Laura's point of like finding that confidence, finding out who you are and like being your number mm-hmm. one hype man. Like that is it's a thing. And I, I do it with my kids. My dad did it with me. And I look back, I'm like, oh, that's why he did that. I didn't even really mm-hmm. realize it. But it does make a difference. Like you have to continually just like you have a coach in your ear telling you how great you are. Like you have to find that for yourself. And you mm-hmm. have to tell yourself how great you are. And you know what? If you, you don't are, toot your own horn sometimes, you might never hear the music. So, right? Wise toot, man once told me that. Right? It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a real thing. Okay, let's move on. We're going to talk about the playbook. So, this Super Bowl, um, T and I, um, our thing, our goal, or our theme is becoming you and just figuring mm-hmm. out who you are. Who do you want to become? How are you becoming yourself more and more and more? And so we had this idea of the playbook looking back. And I know for you, Drew, it wasn't that long ago. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> so but we're, we'll start with you. Um, what, what was your plan or vision that you had for yourself when you were 20, 21 years old? And are you where you thought you'd be now? No. And yeah, so answer that question, no. I think when I was 19, 20, I thought by 25, 26, I'm 28 now, but I'm 25 till I'm 40, it's fine. Um, I think back then <laughs> I thought I would be like married with kids and in my dream job by now, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing mm-hmm. I did learn within my first boot camp that Laura said is to enjoy the ride. You don't always have to look ahead all the time. You can really just enjoy where you are. So um, mm-hmm. I'm very grateful and happy mm-hmm. with, you know, the company that I work for. Um, I'm happy in my relationship. I'm happy without children. Oh, God, Lord. Uh, <laughs> at least right now. <laughs> you know, it's, I'll, I'll have them down in the 30s at some point. <laughs> She but, has no, a I'm doubt, though. That y'all listen to her. <laughs> Look, take yeah, your like, time. Just wait. Okay? It's take fine. your time. It's fine. There's no rush. I got okay? another decade. <laughs> another couple decades. But uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm still happy. Like, I'm not where I thought I was, but I'm still happy. But I'm also still hungry. You know, like, while I'm grateful mm-hmm. for where I am, mm-hmm. I'm still hungry for, you know, the next opportunity that gets me closer to my dream. That's beautiful. Love what it. about you, Laura? Um when I was going through that phase, not phase, when I was going through that really hard time and I went to this incredible place by myself and brought um, a journal and it was one of those places, Drew's heard this a thousand times, I talk about this place like it is my Mecca because it was, but it was all about, you know, those places where you go work on yourself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, Mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. And so I was working on being present and figuring out who I was because I had no idea besides my job title. And I went to see a psychic there and I never been to one and I didn't know what I thought about it, but I was in that place of, I was Mm -hmm. trying everything because I wasn't happy and I was doing everything to see what made me happy. And so I went to one and she was incredible and like, really like I was crying. Like she just like saw into my soul and all of that. And, um, she, at the very end, she said to me, go ahead and ask your last question because we're done. And I was like, oh, boy, like, I don't have anything. Like, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm, you know, thank you for seeing me and thank you for, like, feeling me and I'm good. And she said, no, I need you to ask your last question. And I was like, I don't lie to psychics. <laughs> like, you're really yeah, good. I feel no one lying. Yeah. So. I was like, honest to God, I don't have anything. I'm so grateful for this time with you. And she got very serious and very mean. And she was like, I need you to shut your mouth 
and I need you to quiet your mind and I need you to say the first thing that comes into your mind because I'm telling you right now, if you leave here and don't ask me this question, you're going to think this was a waste of your time and a waste of your money. And I was so like, uh, so I had no question. I was so scared though. And so I closed my eyes and all of a sudden I heard myself speak, but I don't know where it came from. And all I asked was, have I peaked? Because at the time I thought 40 was really old and I was coming off a really sad, scary, sad marriage that I stayed in way too long. And I didn't care if the plane I was in crashed and I had, I had won my Emmy. I had achieved everything I thought I was going to make me happy. Yeah. And so all I could think of what have I peaked and this will answer the question. But so then this woman reached over and she held my hand and she looked at me and she said, Oh honey, you're not even going to believe how good it's about to get for you. Oh, my and goodness. that was oh, my goodness. everything. And so I say that mm-hmm. to say, I'm one year older than I am two years older than, um, than my mom when she died. So I've lived longer than my mom ever did. Mm. I am madly in love with my husband. I'm madly in love with these women. I get to mentor. I'm madly in love with who I am right now. And I don't care about the job. If, if 20 year old me or 30 year old me or 40 year old me would have looked at me and been like, God, she feels so good about who she is and about what Mm -hmm. she's doing and what she's contributing. Like, I would be like, then then I'm doing it right. And it took a long time to get here. But man, I'm just, I'm in love with where I'm at right now. And that's why I'm hard on, you know, all the galvanizers of just yeah. let's stop looking. Let's be where your feet are. Let's just yeah. take a moment because you don't know what's ahead. Let's stay present mm-hmm. right now and live this mm-hmm. life, love this life because you don't know what's coming up. And, you know, I sound old, but it's just the wisdom that comes with getting no. older and the gratitude. That's so beautiful. That is beautiful. That Absolutely beautiful. beautiful. I appreciate can, you sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for this therapy session, you guys. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen. You're speaking to our hearts, okay? This is so Directly good. I know to this our is hearts. Going to yeah. just bless so many women. So that was yes. That was I, honestly that was our best playbook answer, Tia. Absolutely. <laughs> Hands down. I'm like, I'm not even she asking the rest the of the questions. I'm not Put asking the rest of the questions. Me too. Okay. <laughs> Right, like, but we're gonna okay, we're gonna move so on to the play to uh, the two minute drill. To the, <laughs> yeah, no, you yes, have one question. Yes, so, no, 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 I'm not asking that question because that you ready is the period. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It okay. was that just <laughs> like mic drop. Okay, we're, right. Um, okay, so we're gonna uh, play a game called the two minute drill. Yes, Tia, do you want to start with the first question? Well, real, just to explain it to you guys real quick, this is a remix of our traditional two-minute drill. We're, we're going to bounce back and forth between you all. Rapid fire questions. So whatever comes to mind first. Um, Toy, you can kick it off. The first question is for Laura. Okay. Laura, you ready? Yes. Two-minute drill starts now. Okay. Which is your favorite to cover? Super Bowl, Olympics, or NBA? Super Bowl. Nice. Drew, where do you go when you want to be alone? Mm, Spin class, even though it's not technically alone, but it's alone in my mind. (laughs) That's right. That's right. That's a great answer. Okay, Laura, my next question for you is best mistake you've ever made? Probably Charles Barkley. uh, Best mistake I ever made was taking people for granted and not realizing that even though my job said reporter, um, confusing that with who I am as a person, that there's no excuse for what you do, changing who you are as a person. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I'm that trying to say that. Sense. So, yes. thing, so going back to what we talked about, not treating people like human beings because thinking reporter, player, reporter, coach, and not realizing mm-hmm. it's all human beings trying to help each other out and do the best we can. That's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Drew, who's your favorite on air talent? And it cannot be Laura. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Jessica Mendoza. And I just because I've looked up to her as a softball player. Um, she was also an outfielder. Mm-hmm. She was an Olympian. And, and she's also like trailblazing in her own right in the baseball world, which is really hard to do. That's a good Absolutely. One. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Laura, actual notebook or are you more of a notes app person this is my 2022 
NFL season. I know that's me. I've, I'm so old school. I, everything is on a notebook. Okay. Look. Pen, 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 pen. Wait, and this is my my new journal. Womankind World Domination Action Planner. Let's oh, wait go. A okay, I may. Is this I'm yours? Ask you about so that wait a minute. minute. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just it, it is my journal. I did not create that, but I felt that. Mm. Okay, that. I had to write that, that down. I'm gonna have girl. to right Google it. Okay, Drew, <laughs> when was the last time you actually asked for help? Mm, that's a hard one. Um, I really don't like asking for help. I'm an only child, and <laughs> also a child of an alcoholic, so I really don't like to ask for help. <laughs> But I did have to ask okay, my dad fair. to help me pay for an airline ticket one time. And that was like three weeks ago. So it happens. Hey, it, right. every, every, every now and then life humbles you, right? That's what we yes. say. It just it humbles you a little bit. So mm-hmm. I get it. You asked yesterday. I was so excited because you don't a lot. But when we were on our call with the galvanizers who are going to the Super Bowl, you asked me a question about research. And oh, yes. I don't usually get a lot of that from you. So I was fired up that you asked, actually. There you go. Yeah. You didn't nice. even realize you asked. I think I am. All right, Laura, what time of the day are you the most productive? Probably um, <laughs> mid to late afternoon. That's my sweet spot for sure. <laughs> I like that. Mid to late afternoon. Okay. Yeah, that's peak. Peak. Okay. Uh, Drew, what item is worth spending more money on for you? Anything travel related. I'm not into material items. I don't care. Uh, This shirt, a gift from my mom. I don't buy stuff for myself. Anything travel related, I'll spend money on. (laughs) I know that's right. That's speaking to mine and Tia's heart. We love to travel as well. Love it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay. Here's a random question, Laura, but I want to, I want to hear what you have to say. If you could change your name, what would it be? (laughs) Um, well, funny, you should say that because I hope my husband's not in, or maybe I do hope he's right there because I'm Laura Oakman, but, um, I keep meaning to change my last name to Laura Haggerty, my husband. (laughs) <laughs> name and not because he want not because he's making me but because I want to because and you it's, want to. it's you guys it's a real thing of having to change your travel it, your like all your numbers and your DMV mm-hmm. and your social and so yeah. it it's been on my list for the last five years that is so funny. <laughs> change my name to Laura oh, for the last five years okay <laughs> we've been together ten but marriage five and it's like, and I know it would mean the world to him. And so I want to do it and I'm proud to do it, but it's so, it's a lot to change your whole identity. And we're, just, it. we're just dropping a little reminder. That's all. That's all. <laughs> five, five years later. Did my okay. husband call you guys? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Drew, what's one thing you wish you had have enjoyed more? My softball career. I would say mm. no need to explain athletes. Yeah. No, no need. No need. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Complete a little bit of a sidebar. Laura a question. I oh, know you just said you're going to change your last name. Are you going to change it on air too? Like, will you no longer go? Will you start going by Laura Haggerty on air? Are you doing a dash? I'm going to do no hyphen, no dash. I'm just going to do the middle name Oakman. So Laura Oakman okay, Haggerty. Okay. But on air, being honest at this age, probably staying. Just, yeah. I don't yeah. It just feels like thing. this age. It, yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. It's, you guys, but these are the conversations I'm so thankful to have because it's, <laughs> like, yes. now it is a choice and now it is what do you it's do? And it's, and to be able to say it's hard to change your name where yep. most where men don't understand mm-hmm. that. Like it's a big mm-hmm. deal. It mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. It is. Okay, so last Ooh. question for the both of you. What is next for each of you? Drew, we'll start with you first this time. Um, so what's next is accomplishing one of my dreams. And that's to mm-hmm. not only cover the Olympics, but I, I don't want to say I gave myself a deadline, but I speak conversational French. Mm-hmm. So I want to be at the Paris 2024 Olympics. So that's next. Nice. 
Nice, Me too. Nice. Can you say that in French? <laughs> uh, je vais en France. <laughs> Let's go to France. <laughs> Allons-y. <laughs> Love it. How about you, Laura? What's next for you? What's next is taking five magnificent women to Glendale, Arizona to cover a Super Bowl. And I've covered a whole oh. bunch of them and I'm calling my fourth one. And that's mm -hmm. really cool. But for me to be able to bring five women and give them the opportunity in a safe mm -hmm. place and in an empowering place and to watch them live out their dreams um, means more to me than when I covered my first Super Bowl. So I'm incredibly proud of it and incredibly excited for them and um, and sometimes get overwhelmed by how happy I am about it. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. We cannot wait to hug you yes, in person yes. and in person. Meet both and hug you and hang out and cheer mm -hmm. you on from the, you know, I mean, it's just all that you've done, not just in your career, but even for others. And just doing something like this is incredible. It's not heard of. Absolutely. And we thank you. We applaud you for it. This has been uh -huh. such an honor. Um, thank if people want to get a hold of you, Laura, let them know. And you too, Drew. Hold on. You too. <laughs> hold they, on. Uh, if they want to get a hold of you, yes. Let um, them know where they can get a hold of you. Um, Twitter and Instagram is easy. Everything's at Laura Oakman at Galvanize Life for Galvanize. And if they have any questions about Galvanize or want to reach out, info at LauraOakman.com is the email to send. And may I just say before Drew jumps in too, you two are incredible and in and spouses of players are in the same category as women in sports. We get lumped into these boxes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you find yourself in a box that's really empowering and really supportive. And sometimes it's not. And it's hard. And when I saw what you two were doing for your own names and not just your incredible husbands and teaming up together, like kindred hearts, kindred spirits. So I'm so grateful that you had Drew and I both on, but I love the platform you guys are that you guys have built and are building. And I cannot wait to see you in person in Glendale. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. That was heartfelt. Thank you. Yes, I'm so appreciative right, as well to be here. This has just been so – can I just hang out with you guys all day? We're just going to keep this up all day because it's so nice to chat <laughs> with you all. And I'm Glendale, really excited okay? to see you in person. <laughs> Yes, let's do it. Um, but as far as where you can find me, I'm at the Drew Jones, the one and only. Um, mm. <laughs> there's my unapologetically myself on social media. So the Drew Jones on um, Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn if you want to be a professional. So. If you, <laughs> I'll be sure to uh, drop the links in the show notes. But you guys make sure you check Drew and Laura out at the Super Bowl this weekend. Yes, we're going to have so much fun. Y'all come turn up with us. We'll see you in Glendale at, uh, what is it? February February 11th is our show. February 12th is when Laura's going to be on the sidelines. Drew's mm -hmm. going to be there. We're going to all turn up. So we hope to see y'all there. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Whew, that was such an amazing conversation. Absolutely. And, you know, my ass go on tangent upon tangent, <laughs> but... Gems, right? Because we could have we could have dove deeper into her on that ungrateful topic. Mm -hmm. Because how many times do do you hear like, "What are you depressed for? What are you mad at your husband for? Like, you sitting in that house, you doing this, you doing that, you getting all these opportunities. What are you unhappy for? Mm -hmm. Like, come come on, somebody. Yeah, and you know, I get. I think for me, when I think about people that say that, it's it's comes from a, a, a I would say a lack inside of them. They, mm -hmm. they think because you, if you get all of these things, they're going to make you happy. But happiness, yeah. you have to find within. And so you think about all the people that we know that do have money, that are famous, that are well-known, that are depressed, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. end up committing suicide. So by yep. now, I think we all should know and understand that that is not what brings happiness. And wherever someone is, you have to honor them where they are and be supportive. Mm -hmm. So um, I appreciate Laura for sharing and for being so transparent and vulnerable. Um, mm -hmm. It was beautiful. So I look forward and to hanging Drew. with them too at Super Bowl. Okay. Because Drew, yes. when I say- Drew the, is wise beyond the, her years, okay? Absolutely. And honestly, <laughs> the the amount of confidence that she has, like you only wish your daughters yeah. could be like that, right? You only wish that you are yeah. doing that and pouring into, I mean, not just your daughters, but your kids in general, right? Because I don't ever want to- yes. um, 
intentionally raise kids that want to shrink or that are not confident, things of that nature. So yes, come through Drew. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Lori. You are fantastic. And listen, Tia, we almost there, girl. We heading to Super Bowl in a couple days. I cannot wait. Y'all yes. come see us at Super Bowl. Do not forget to join us at mm-hmm. Neiman Marcus on Saturday, February the 11th from noon to two. Get your tickets. Uh, we'll put the uh, the link in uh, our notes, right, Tia? Bio. So mm-hmm. that they can yep. click on there and get them. And we'll see you in a few. Yes, yes. For the latest on the Inside Lines podcast, make sure to follow us at Inside Lines Podcast on both Instagram and Facebook. You can also listen online and share your favorite episode at InsideLinesPodcast.com. You can leave um, some questions, comments, and feedback via voicemail at our speakpipe.com forward slash Inside Lines account. You can also be sure to check us out on YouTube because we'll be releasing these Super Bowl episodes starting next Tuesday, which is Valentine's Day, February 14th. Um, each day we'll release um, a, a new segment on YouTube. So make sure you guys have subscribed so that you get the notifications. Yes. And until then, leave it all out on the field. Thanks for listening. And guess what? We'll see y'all at Super Bowl. (laughs) Bye.